we build leadership up to be something that we're not worthy of. And leadership shouldn't be that because if you can make a difference for someone, that's enough. And so what really shifted the whole perception is if you can go find someone that you can help that's you two years ago, the stuff that you didn't know two years ago, and you can make a positive impact in their life, you can make a huge difference. In when you teach, you build huge confidence. So if you don't know like, oh, I have to go stand on the stage and give a talk to 50,000 people. No, you don't. Go talk to second graders. Mm. You know, you struggled with, um, you know, being in and out of juvie, right? So you had that struggle. Mm. Go help those kids. Yeah. And it will build your confidence. It will build the things that you're good at so much because you know so much about that life because you've been through Welcome to the Who You Know Show, where what you know is important, but who you know can make all the difference in your business, career, relationships, and your life. I'm super excited. This episode is brought to you by Real News PR. We're at Video Marketing World, and I'm joined here today with Nick Scovegard. Did I say that yes, right? Yes, yes, you got it. Nick Scovegard, and Nick is the owner and founder of Alter Ego Marketing, a full-service creative agency that helps clients build super brands, both in the real world and in the digital one. So, everybody, welcome Nick to the house. Uh, thank you. What's up, man? Not much, man. This is a this is an awesome conference. Loving this. Absolutely, video marketing world is pretty pretty amazing. But I want to dig into what your story is. So, Alter Ego Marketing. Tell us about this uh, and how you got started in this. Uh, you know, if you would ask me um, several years ago, I would have told you that marketing was my passion. Um, but what I've uncovered along the journey is that it's really entrepreneurship. Okay. I love getting to know a business owner who loves what they're doing who is really, really good at what they do, uncover what makes them tick, and kind of be able to tell their story. Mm. So marketing is the tool that I use to do that, and the storytelling is where all the power is. I love that. So you get somebody who's good at what they do, but maybe the world just doesn't know it yet. Yeah, yeah, kind of an alter ego, right? Yeah. Like give them that Superman. Okay. So do you you make them wear a cape or anything? No, no, <laughs> we, uh, we we make them look really good in the uh, in the business professional world. So uh, a lot of times we help them uncover that story, figure out what their why is, and then be able to tell that story with a lot more passion. Ah, okay, all right, I like that. So what's your why? Tell me about that. You know what? Um, my why is that when I was young, when I was growing up and in school, I I thought I was stupid. Like I really, I wasn't good at in school. I wasn't good at sports. I wasn't good at any musical instruments. I didn't have any talent. And what I uncovered along the way is that what I was good at is talking to people. What I was good at is getting to know people and selling, but I didn't know that was a skill set until I was like 25 years old. So I spent the last three years working with um, a young entrepreneurship program called the Midland Institute for Entrepreneurship. And it teaches high school juniors and seniors how to found companies. And oh, wow. getting to go back and teach those kids what their superpowers are Ooh. and like how to uncover that entrepreneurship and how to make money and like where their value is is the best thing ever because that's what I needed when I was a kid. Man, I'm going to give you a mic drop for that. Let me tell you, man. <laughs> Listen, I, myself, uh, I didn't feel like I was worth anything either. You know, I didn't go to college. I don't have a formal education. I Listen, I was a screw up. I was a, a felon. Too. I was a felon by 13. Okay. Not me too, but still. I, listen, I was in and out of juvie, you know, messing up, uh, getting in a lot of trouble. And, and anyway, so, but um, one of the things that I, uh, the lessons that I got through all of that was communication because I had a lot of people in and out of my household, mm -hmm. like different types yeah. of people. My house, my household was kind of like a homeless shelter. Yeah. I had a lot of people in and out, in and out, in and out, but it allowed me to be able to, um, you know, have conversations with any walk of life. Yeah. And be able to relate to any walk of life. But I think that so many kids, and I mean so many people, even adults in this room now, they struggle with that imposter syndrome. They struggle telling their own story. Mm. And Trevor, when you were growing up, I'm sure that you had that same thing. You had a ton of value. Yeah. And you have a ton of value now, but you didn't know how to harness it. You didn't know how to talk about it. And it's it's super uncomfortable. And when you're a kid, you're also trying to like find your identity and stuff like that. You're trying to find out where you fit in. I think everybody wants to fit in yeah. somewhere. So Trevor, they want to be able to have a, a, a group that they can connect with, right? There's a quote that I love, and it's it's hard to read the label when you're inside the bottle. <laughs> so, so like, I can, I can get to know you, and I can talk about your strengths, and I can talk about what you're good at, and I can, like, build you up, 
But if you do it for yourself, you look like an egomaniac, right? Mm-hmm. You look like a jerk. And that's the thing that kids struggle so hard with is, mm-hmm. like, they don't know how to tell their own story. They're not confident with that, and they can't find the people to help them uncover it. Do you have any kind of tips for that? Like any kind of step system? Like, hey, uh, uh, here's three steps to tell your story better or whatever. Anything like that? So it's really funny. The easiest way to do that, the easiest way to uncover that, especially if you're young, Mm -hmm. is go find the people who care about you the most. And ask them. Just simply ask them. What am I good at? What what makes me who I am and how do I how do I make a difference in this world? Just ask them for that feedback and if you go find 10 people who actually care about you to give you that feedback, teachers, parents, friends, whatever, straight up ask them because the thing is you never do that. That's a mm. weird conversation. Yeah. But what you'll get is from 10 different people, you'll get really, like, really succinct characters, mm. characteristics of commonality, of like, hey, you're a good listener. It- hey, you're really good at sales. Hey, you're really outgoing. I wish I had that skill. Ooh. And then suddenly you're like, oh, oh, crap. I didn't know that everyone didn't have that skill. Like, I was good at talking to people when I was a kid. But it wasn't math and it wasn't football and I didn't win an award for it. I didn't know that everyone else couldn't do that. You know, it's so interesting. It's like what you were saying about being in the bottle to see the label, however you said that, right? Um, so you, you have your own perception of who you are, right? We have our own perception. And then there's the outside perception of what the world views of us. Yes. And I think they're oftentimes very different. Mm -hmm. Right. And so by going and asking the questions like, hey, what do you, you know, asking the people close to you and even random strangers or maybe see you online or whatever, just asking people, hey, what do you what do you feel like my superpower is? Yes. What do you feel like my uh, uh, my kryptonite is? What's my (laughs) what's my weakness? Right. Right. And um, that's great feedback. Have you ever heard of uh, Drew Dudley? No, I haven't. Drew Dudley uh, gave a TED Talk in Ontario, Canada, uh, Canada um, called Everyday Leadership. And it is literally the TED Talk that completely reshaped my whole life. And he just mm. talks about, like, we build leadership up to be something that we're not worthy of. Mm. And leadership shouldn't be that because if you can make a difference for someone, that's enough. And so what really shifted the whole perception is if you can go find someone that you can help, that's you two years ago, the stuff that you didn't know two years ago, and you can make a positive impact in their life, you can make a huge difference. And when you teach, you build huge confidence. So if you don't know, like, oh, I have to go stand on the stage and give a talk to 50,000 people. No, you don't. Go talk to second graders. Mm. You know, you struggled with, um, you know, being in and out of juvie, right? So you had that struggle. Mm. Go help those kids. Yeah. And it will build your confidence. It will build the things that you're good at so much because you know so much about that life because you've been through it i love that and you know what i'm gonna give you another mic drop for that so here's the deal because it's not you don't have to be light years of success ahead right what you said is two years you know like listen hey i was there just just two years ago i was in your shoes and and this is what i did to get where i am today and it's like you don't have to be light years ahead you just got to be just a little bit further uh, ahead in order to be able to show somebody the way Right. And it's actually even better. It's better that you're that close. Right. Instead of, you know, 15 years ago, I was in your shoes. Well, you forgot. You've probably forgotten what it was like. You've forgotten what it felt like. You've forgotten a lot of those steps that you took. Right. But it seems easy now. Yeah. But like, yeah, I love that. Just just a couple of years and you can put a program together. You could put you could put a coaching program together. You can make money off of that. There's lots of stuff you can do. that. So I don't know who said this quote. I wish I could uh, attribute it properly. But you are best suited to serve Mm. the person you once were. I love that. Like, That's another great quote. Yeah. Ah, man. Like what you've been through, go mm-hmm. back and help those kids who are going through it because you remember what it was like to be trapped there, to be stuck, and to like not know what to do next or not know how to fix it or feel like it was hopeless. Yeah, man. And that's what I do this show for. I'm going to tell you that right now because our audience, we have a lot of career changers, a lot of people that get let go, furloughed, fired, you know, all yeah. these things in corporate America. And, um, and they, they go through this. Uh, imposter syndrome, they go through the what's my value, rejection, hopelessness, all that stuff that you're talking about. Yep. And that's why I really feel led to to serve this audience because I was there at one point in my life and it was a different scenario that, that led me feel that way. But I've been there. I know what it feels like. Right. And um, so that's why I feel so led to, to help lift them back up um, and show them the way. Now, to your point with the with the kids, you know, my story is a little bit different because I was actually, I'm going to say I was almost like rescued. Yeah. 
in in uh, uh, because the household I was growing up in, everything was chaos and it was just it was a nightmare. And then um, I was forced to move with my father. And my father showed me the way. So I had yep. a mentor or coach. And, and maybe that's the, the lesson there is to find someone. You know, maybe maybe you're not literally pulled out of the environment. Yeah. But find someone who can coach, mentor, teach, you know, and, and help you. So maybe that's the lesson. Yeah. Yeah. Finding a mentor or coach is incredibly valuable. Um, you know, if you can find somebody who's living the life you want to be living. That's it. Right. And, there. and go just just find a way to be in the same room with them. You will learn so much than than you would ever learn in a million internships doing crap you don't care about. Absolutely. And you need to go serve those people too. Like figure out how I mean, in all transparency, so how we're here today. So I remember uh year twenty nineteen video marketing world. I was introduced to Scott Simpson, uh came out here and I put together a makeshift studio, man. It was like it was not this lights camera action we uh -huh. got going on here. Um but I, I, I did that. I was like, hey, what can I do for you? Can I bring my show? Can we do interviews? And he was like, I like that. That'd be cool. It would bring some, uh, some uh, energy to the conference. And uh, so I did that. And then the next year, um, you know, I kept bringing him uh, people that would speak. And then the next year, I... Um, I emceed it. He asked me to emcee it. And That's then this awesome. year we're doing this. And so, you know, so like figure out how you can bring value and how can you serve? What can you bring to the table? And if you can't, um, listen, if, the, if you're not able to sit at the table, like serve water. Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> I like that. You know what I'm saying? Well, and, and not only that, but like, okay, you, you've come so far and you show up with this and everyone who meets you like me for the very first time has no idea that two or three years ago it didn't look like this. Oh, no. Heck because no. You, you, you look like you've got it all figured out. You look like you've got it done. And so like you've got so many people who want to be where you are now that would kill for an internship. They would kill for an opportunity to talk to you. Well, I'll tell you what. I'll That's give them amazing. the secret right now. So shout out. I said this episode's brought to you by Real News PR. Uh, if you want the secret, you just need to go get a good team of folks that'll put this lights, camera, action together and make you look like a rock star. Because, listen, I don't know what the heck all this technology and stuff is. So shout out to Real News PR. Y'all are amazing, making us look like a million bucks today. Um, man, OK, so tell me a little bit about uh, you. You mentioned here that um, you, you dealt with imposter syndrome. Oh, big time. Big Talk to me time. about that story. So, you know, I kind of mentioned that when I was uh, when I was young, I really struggled with like, I'm not good at anything. And I really, where did that come from? I, you know, I, I, I could get I could get C's in schools without trying. Um, I worked my ass off to get B's and A's felt impossible. And so I got to the point where I was like, you know what? I'm just not going to do homework. I'm going to guess at all the answers. I'm going to get my C's and I'm going to go home and play Halo for eight hours. Like, that's <laughs> what I did. And so, like, I nice. really struggle with that imposter syndrome because I graduated college with a marketing degree, literally, and this is an embarrassing story to tell now, but like I literally walked out with my piece of paper degree thinking like, okay, I got it. Somebody's going to give me a six-figure job with a corner office and a car and wrong. crickets. Yeah, oh, God. <laughs> so wrong. Yeah. And I really thought that like they would just be lining up to come get me. But the thing I did is I coasted my way all the way to that piece of paper. I didn't earn it. I didn't mm. do anything. I had no experience. And so when I started out, I really struggled to like communicate my own value. Mm. So I would show up in rooms and feel like, do I belong here? Like, am I good enough? Yeah. Like everybody else has it figured out. Why do I feel like I don't have any idea what I'm doing? Oh, uh, you know what I think is a, a quote that I heard a shout out to Rachel, uh, drunken Miller. Uh, she said this quote on our show one time. She said, an invitation is an indication of a qualification. Ooh, that's right? a good one. I like that. Right? And so a lot of times what happens is somebody will invite you to something, right? Because they see something in you. Uh-huh. Right? They see the, that qualification. They invite you. You get that imposter syndrome because you're like, I don't know. I've never done this before. Like, for instance, last year uh, I was invited to MC this conference. I'd never done that before. Yeah. Right? Total imposter syndrome. I was afraid. I was deathly afraid. But, um, but again, an invitation is an indication of a qualification. So he saw it in me. Yeah. I didn't, I've never done it before. Well, and, and so that's so incredibly powerful. So like, I, I actually have to tell a quick story here is, you know, I was working for a radio station back in the day and I ended up um, connecting with a guy who owned a local car dealership. Mm. And we, a, a buddy of mine and um, him and his wife all played like a round of golf together. And I was real young. I, I really didn't know what I was doing. And we had this really casual conversation and he saw something in me that I didn't see in myself. Mm. He was just 
completely like, hey, I want to take a chance on this kid. Um, ended up working for him, Steve Taylor, uh, years later. And he literally created the opportunity for me to be where I am today because he saw something and gave me an opportunity that I'm not sure I deserved at the time. What's that guy's and name? Steve Taylor. Steve Taylor. Shout out Steve Taylor. <laughs> Love that. And you said that was an auto? Yeah, it's an auto dealership. Auto dealership. I, I came from the auto industry. Yeah, I got uh, I got given a, a marketing budget that at the time I couldn't possibly fathom and just the trust to go do whatever I thought was best. Wow, that's And I cool. learned everything I know about marketing through the three years that I spent with the company. That's freaking awesome. Just going, and he gave me so trust. So much trust and freedom yeah. because he believed in me and saw something in me that I don't know that I could have pitched to him had I had the opportunity. They're like, hey, do you want this job? You know, sell yourself. I couldn't have done it. While we're on this topic, I want to shout out Cal Fami. He was the sales director at the auto dealership that I worked for. And I walk in there at 20 years old. Uh, never. Well, actually, I came from Harley Davidson. So I was selling. Yeah. I did have a little experience. I was selling Harleys. And then and then went to the auto industry and he hired me and um, but he really saw something in me and and really coached and mentored me poured into me like he was a coach you know what I mean and he was a hard coach he sometimes yeah. he'd be, blah, blah, blah. I mean he was in your face and blah, old school car guy man this guy would get in your face and you know and uh, <laughs> a lot of people couldn't work for him but I needed a little bit of discipline and structure yeah. I needed that and so I we be, we ended up turning into like um, uh, Tom Brady and Bill Belichick like he would. Tell the tell me to, the play to run, and I'd go run the play, and uh, I became the top producer there every year, six years in a row. Uh, by the time I was 24, I was making 150k a year. Uh huh. Uh, bought a house. I mean, it really started my uh, entrepreneurial and sales career. Like it, it, it got me off to a good start. Yeah. It got me off to a really, really good start. Well, not only that, but you're like you're surrounded with people who want to be a players. You're surrounded by training and opportunity and people who believe in you and invest in you. Yes. And like that is game changing yep. for who you become. Every time I look in my life, uh, the the pivots, the moments in my life where I've seen big, big jumps is there's always somebody who believed in me. Oh yeah. Always. So it's always who you know. That's why are, the name of this show. It's all about who you know. There are three. Three, three gentlemen who have been like second, third, fourth, fifth dads to me in, in, that have literally reshaped my right life. So Steve Taylor was one of the first ones. Dennis Pichard, mm. um, he owns an agency in my market. I literally compete with him right now. And he is still a friend and mentor. Like he is still oh, somebody awesome. who I look up to. And then right here in Dallas, actually, Ron Barger has invested in me and poured into me for the last two and a half years. And it's totally changed my life. But yeah, you, you can find that person. And the trick is now... You've got to go pay that forward. Somebody did that for you. Ooh, hold up. What did you just say? you got to pay that forward. Mm. Somebody did that for you, so now you need to go find somebody you can do that for. Man, I love that you said that because I, uh, you don't know this, but I actually, I launched this thing called the Pay It Forward campaign uh -huh. where I put together a, a program. It's a coaching program for the job seekers that normally would cost about $3,200, All right, And I'm giving it. For free. That's awesome. Okay. That's awesome. And um, but the the secret is it's a pay it forward campaign. So what they have to do is they have to refer th in order to get it in order to get access to this this thirty two hundred dollar program they've got to re refer three people in. Right. Right. And so then those three people I'm going to teach to do it, and those three people are going to teach to do it. And so mm -hmm. when you do the math, right, three times three is nine. Nine times three is 27. 27 times three is 81. You do this 12 times, it's one and a half million people. That's amazing. And so that's the way I'm going to make my mark is by this pay it forward camp that campaign that I'm launching right now. And um, I'm super excited about it. I'm, I'm really, really pumped about that. So I'm glad you said but that. We didn't even plan this. It just no. had like serendipity, right? Yeah. Like it just comes. <laughs> but like that's, that's so impressive that you're creating something like that with the intention to help people. Yep. And... I have the quote, and this is the only thing I've ever said in my entire life that I believe is worth writing down, is that the secret to life is to put so much good out in the world that it cannot help but find its way back to you. Ooh. If you just give and give and give and give and give, you will get more in return Let's than go. you could ever imagine. And I have found that to be true over and over and over. When I help, when I do something of value and I expect nothing in return, it comes back. It always comes back i get a referral back. i get a lead i get a new customer i get something that i never could have planned for yes but that's crazy it, so pay it forward and, and well, it will all come back it's in the bible reap what you sow you sow a good seed you'll reap a good harvest man i mean it's it's 
it's the the law of reciprocity and so um i I love what you stand for nick this has been amazing how can the audience connect with you what's the best place if they Uh, need if they need any of your services or anything like that what's the best place for them so our website is alteryourmarketing.com and you can find me that's nick and i see last name is skovgard s-k-o-v-g-a-a-r-d what's really nice is i got a super unique name so you drop it in you're gonna find me all over Love it, man. So y'all need to go connect with Nick. I want you to do me a big favor. I want you to blow him up all over <laughs> social media. Tell him what was your favorite mic drop moment on this show. And guys, that's the show. It's all about who, who you know. know. Woo! Let's go cash flow. Thanks for listening to the Who You Know Show podcast. My name is Trevor Houston, and if you've enjoyed this episode, consider subscribing wherever you listen and leave us a positive review to help us keep the mics on in the studio. Until next week, that's the show. It's all about who you know.